I'm Shelby Sim, and this is the Santinez Valley. Six beautiful communities with a million things to offer. Delicious food, world-class wine, and more fun than you can imagine. But at its heart is a community of great people with stories to share. Join me and let's discover the Santinez Valley. It's a cool, comfortable morning here in the Danish capital of America, Solvain. The clock just rang seven, and there are already scores of people out and ready to enjoy an early bird breakfast at the iconic Solvain restaurant. I really hope they have able skeevers. Jeff, thank you so much for having us out this morning. Well, thank you, Shelby. Pleasure to have you in here. Yeah, it's an honor to be in the historic Solvain restaurant. Please tell us a little bit about the history and your history and how the restaurant came to be and, and how it came to be yours and yeah. what's going on. Well, it started across the street where Ingeborg's is. It used Ingeborg's chocolates. Chocolates, yeah. right. It used to be called June's and Polly's. And it was like one of the oldest coffee shops around. It was a local spot. So Arnie was one of the last owners on that side of the street. And he started Abel Skeevers cooking in the window because in Denmark, you can only have them at Christmas and Easter. Abel Skeevers are a Danish dessert. Imagine a pancake shaped into a ball with jam and sugar on top. So you know. Imagine heaven on a plate. So it's more of a holiday treat in it's Denmark. It's holiday, but it's yeah. so delicious. Arnie had the foresight to know that people will come to Solvang just for these. So in 1972, Arnie decided to move across the street, build it how he wanted, and that's how the Sol Arnie Solvang restaurant started. Huh. Then, in 1982, Arnie had some health issues. He was young, in his 40s, and I was unemployed. It was a recession, and somehow, with my father and family, we acquired the Solvain restaurant in 1982. So I'm going on 40 years, Shelby. 40 years at this spot. Absolutely. And you're born and raised in Solvain. I'm actually fourth generation. My family goes back to the beginning. Oh my goodness. So you've seen a lot of changes. A lot of changes in town. Wow. Uh, well, I see incredible food in front of us and we'll talk about that in a moment. But okay. tell us a little bit about your customer. I, I noticed that, that when we came in that you said hi to everybody. So it's, I, I feel like in the morning, this time of day is more of a local thing. Right, in the morning we open. I have them waiting outside to come in and they're locals, I know them all. And then, so when do the tourists and the visitors start uh, coming starting in? Starting about 10, 11 o'clock, and then it picks up from the people visiting the San Inez Valley. Yeah. They like a good, healthy breakfast before they start their wine adventure and tasting and all the events they can do in the San Inez Valley. Yeah, and I have been here several times and it is a good, healthy, wholesome breakfast. And come for the early bird special as an insider oh, tip. Yeah. Uh, what do we have in front of us, Jeff? I have our uh, four dishes that is a must try. Uh, we'll start with the Danish pancakes. I was going in. raised on them. 
If there was sour milk in the refrigerator, I was having Danish pancakes for breakfast. Oh. And what's the difference between regular pancakes? Well, these are a lot lighter and they're thin like a crepe, but imagine a crepe with lots of flavor to okay. it. Okay, more flavor involved, yeah. And you can also add uh, raspberry jam to it, butter. Mm. Light, fluffy. And that's what I was raised on. Wow. Then we have our Dana sausage, mm. which is a mild pork sausage. And it's quite lean, so there's no nitrates in it or anything. And it has a beautiful taste. And we serve it with my mother's Danish mustard. Very savory. And so then good. the sausage goes well with our house able skeever. Oh, is that right? And you're right, it goes so well with the Danish sausage. And then finally, our breakfast favorite for the locals, the Eggs Benedict. Traditional. Traditional. Looks like great hash browns, some of the best hash browns in the San Valley, well, if you ask me. Well, we make them fresh, they're not frozen. And we also have a California's Benedict with avocado for those that do not like to uh, do the ham. have the meat. Right. And. Uh, I noticed there's a plaque here. We have talked about Sideways a few times on the show. Right. Um, major motion picture that keeps going. I'm thinking that 20 years ago now, I, I, I'm not and, sure. And people still come in. Yeah. And they wait to sit at this table. They filmed scene five, which is where Miles and Jack had a conversation. Thomas Hayden Church and Paul Giamatti. Yes. Oh. So they were discussing their plans and uh, he threw the keys and that was the scene. <laughs> a momentous scene for a sure. A momentous scene, yeah. yeah. And people still come all these years later. For all this. the yeah. years later. So I had to put this special plaque up here. Yeah. Well, Jeff, thanks again for having us out. I'm going to go uh, explore some more of the day. I think before you go, Shelby, you're going to have to uh, make some of these because I want you a little bit more Danish. All right, I'm in, let's go try it out. All right. I'm really excited to try my hand at making Abel Skeevers. I just hope Jeff doesn't keep count of how many I eat. So Shelby, we're at the famous window at the Solvain restaurant. This pan here is all made out of copper and it holds the heat perfect for making them. So what you're going to do is pour and then take your knitting needle like okay. that. And just to the brim? Just to the brim. Since we're having Danish days this year, Shelby, I'm gonna need a little more help <laughs> in the kitchen making these. That's right, I'm down. And how many years has Danish days been happening? Oh, 50? Since uh, after World War II, oh so my golly. I'd say Hundreds. since the 50s. Yeah, since the 50s, wow. And then while they're cooking, Shelby, yes. I want you to take these other ones that I made okay. and just turn them so they cook all around. All around. And usually a uh, holiday treat in Denmark. Yes. That solving has turned into an every day, every moment treat. You can come for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, yeah? Absolutely. And people do, no doubt about it. And just like when you're cooking in the oven, you're, you're checking your right. toothpick to see if it sticks. All right, so we're gonna plate some up. Three? Three, right. right. Then we're going to do one spoonful of raspberry jam. All right. Now do the shaker. I shake it. A powdered sugar. Woo! Now you have a perfect dish from the Solvain restaurant. I think there's folks out there waiting for these. I would mind if I serve them? You go right ahead. All right. Here you are, ma'am. We'll see you on our next adventure. 
Our next stop is literally across the street from Solvain Restaurant. Copenhagen House is an awesome retail location that blends Solvain and Danish tradition with modern shopping and design. Let's check it out. Elsa Marie. Hi. Hi. Renee. Thank you so much for having us out to the Copenhagen House. Uh, this spot is really what is the transformation of solving, bringing things into the modern times, and, and everything here is Danish, right? Everything, yeah, everything. all Danish brands. Please tell us, what is Copenhagen House? So the Copenhagen House is the traditional uh, solving on the outside and the contemporary Denmark on the inside. We only have Danish brands and um, the whole store is designed with the Copenhagen Airport in mind. So we have the same storefronts, we have the same flooring, the same lighting. That's a fun way um, to... Uh... Welcome people to Solvay. <laughs> Excellent, and welcome them you do. Uh, it's just gorgeous in here and, and there's so many things to look at. Uh, please tell us about the store and, and all the different things we have in here. House of Amber is uh, the only House of Amber store in the U.S. and um, they've done amber jewelry since 1933 and so a long time and they're really like the Tiffany's of amber. Really great quality and beautiful designs. The amber is a softer stone. It comes in uh, beautiful colors from the cognac color, yellow, we call that milk amber um, and to the dark uh, cherry amber also there's a green amber and um, just really warm and and amber is our precious stone the diamond of Denmark it's so interesting and there's so many other parts to the house let's go check something else out let's join the Copenhagen house and I'll see you in the bank store all right later. what a great location not only to shop but to appreciate Scandinavian design here we are in front of the Hoptimus display. Please explain this area and then all the other brands in the store. Okay, yeah, the Hoptimus, they're really, really popular. They're a fun little bouncy guy. It's um, hop actually means uh, jump. And of course, um, Hoptimist optimism. So, um, Hoptimist. Yeah, How little fun. optimist and really is all for happiness and optimism. So it also fits perfect with Denmark being the happiest country in the world, right? Denmark <laughs> is the happiest country. Awesome. So um, yeah, we have uh, Pandora. Um, Pandora is a Danish jewelry company. Really fun to tell people when they're visiting. A lot of people have Pandora on them and they don't even know it's Danish. So that's always something we like to point out. It is now the third largest jewelry company in the world behind Tiffany's and Cartier. We have George Jensen, beautiful, made of stainless steel, also one of Denmark's top brands. And then for the kids, we have a Lego room. It's um, mostly Lego uh, storage and uh, minifigures. And we have a lot of collectors that come here to, to uh, collect their minifigures. And Renee was telling me uh, when the, the, the house first opened that he had a replicate of the building made in Lego. Yeah, yeah, we still have that. Right now it's yeah. placed over by the front door. Yeah. So people like that too. This is wonderful and what a great representation of what Denmark has to offer. I understand we're gonna go meet uh, Renee in the Bering? Yes, you Excellent. should. All right. <laughs> I'm loving looking at all these products. So welcome to the Bering store, Shelby. Thanks for having me, this is amazing. Let me tell you a little bit about the story of Bering. So it was an idea that started in 2008 between two of my friends in Denmark and myself, and we wanted to start a Danish watch brand. We couldn't really figure out what should be the idea, the style, the, the look of this, other than we wanted to be Danish. So um, at the same time, I did a charity a parachute jump over the North Pole to benefit the polar bears. And when I came back, you and jumped out of a plane. I did. A in helicopter. very cold weather. I Russian imagine. helicopter. Actually. Wow! So when I came back and showed my friend Michael these images from the North Pole, he said, "We need to do something with the Arctic. It's sleek. It's clean. It's Danish. It's contemporary. It match." And we came up with the name Bering, which is the first uh, European discovering Alaska through the Bering Straits, huh. and that's how. Bering started. 14 wow. years later, we're standing here in the first concept store in, in America, Is and it's right, right here in Solvay. That's very cool. Tell us about the design. So the design, we, we want ultimate Danish. I mean, it's clean, it's sleek, It's uh, we, we focus on minimalism. It's not fat. It's not fat, yeah. and we focus on quality, and if you take my watch here, we're not afraid of 
trying to break it because it's European sapphire glass. Oh, wonderful. And uh, I understand you have a museum? We do. We Can have we a Viking and Amber Museum. Ah. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. So now we are at the entrance to the Solvang Amber and Viking Museum. And as you can see, this was the old vault. Now it protects the treasures of the Vikings and Amber relics we have in here. Very when I first cool. bought the building, a realtor said to me, this will be a good storage room. I said, no, 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 no. This is way too precious to be a storage room. So Absolutely. That's what we turned it into. Yeah, good decision. Uh, who is this gentleman here? So this gentleman is Holger the Dane. He's a true replica of a statue that sits in Denmark. He has a lot of history. Holger is asleep, as you can see. And uh, the story is he will wake up if Denmark is ever threatened. Mm. And he was an icon during the World War II resistance movements. They called themselves Holger the Dane as well. So he's important to Denmark. A very imposing figure. He is. Yeah. We hope he doesn't wake up. No, yeah. Uh, but let's try. All right, let's see. So now we're inside the Solvang Amber and Viking Museum. And here we try to tell people a little bit about the geography of Amber, where you can find it. We have a collection of Amber from around the world. We have the history of Amber, where it started and how it evolved during times. We have a little throwback to Jurassic Park here with the insect inside the Amber. We have a copy of the Santa Maria that Columbus came to America on in building Amber. We have models of Vikings, we have Viking jewelry, coins, relics, treasures they traded, and the price prized items of our collections is, of course, our Viking swords from year 800 to 950. Real swords? Real sword. Wow. That I'm not going to speculate what they've been used for, but yeah. they certainly are real. And uh, we had spoken earlier and you said there, that as far as you know, there's only two other places in the United States that only have one sword. Our goal is to keep expanding the collection. Right. And you have three yeah. and it's authentic. It's authentic. Yeah. That's right hand sawing. Ah, uh, and you have a book that's pretty old as well. We have a book that's called The Deeds of the Danes. It was written in year 1100 on manuscript. This is the first printed version from 1575. And it mentioned King Ragnar Lodbrok as the King of Denmark, which you probably know from the Viking show. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, again, it, it, you're never done at the Copenhagen house. There's always new treasures around every corner. It's so cool that they're honoring Danish history. And who would have thought that there'd be such an amazing collection of artifacts here? You've got to check this out. So Renee, please tell us how folks can find their way to this amazing Copenhagen house. Well, I always say the best way to be known is word of mouth and past experiences. So that's one way. But of course, you can find us at thecopenhagenhouse.com or in the Instagram, the Copenhagen House, Facebook, as well as just walking by. Awesome. Thank you again. This Thank has been you. really, really cool. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Before I leave, I've been invited to try a traditional outfit. This should be fun. It's been an amazing visit to the Copenhagen House. I'm off to Marauder. Our next stop is Community Clayworks in Bealton. This is a place where folks can have fun and create art in a group environment. Here we are at Community Clayworks in Bealton, California, one of our six communities in the Santinas Valley. And we're with Veronica. Veronica, what am I wearing? You are wearing a split leg apron. Very cool, very cool, very different for me. Tell us about Community Clayworks. Well, Community Clayworks is an inclusive ceramics learning community. So people can come become members take classes and just come and learn to play with clay. And what are they doing with clay? Everything. Everything from sculpture to functional work. All right. Uh, can we do some? Yeah, let's get our hands dirty. All right. We just sat down and I'm already having fun. I'm this glad. Is fantastic. It All just right. gets better. All right. Let's okay. do it. So we want to consider our posture. So make sure your stool is really close and we want to be straddling the wheel. A few things that are really important to remember. Yes. When you're throwing on a potter's wheel, it's not just about muscle. It's about stillness. If you okay. stay really still, the clay is going to take the shape of your hands, right? We're doing something that's been done for thousands of years, right? The hieroglyphics with the kick wheel, same exact thing. We just have electricity now. So it's us and physics. Okay. The other thing to remember is easy on, easy off. Whenever we're touching the wheel, whenever we're touching our clay. 
All right, so let's get our ball of clay. And they're already wedged for us, meaning there's no air in here and the moisture level is equalized. Okay. So you want to stop your wheel. Stop my wheel. Okay, and we're going to aim for the middle and we're going to slam it down. Okay, and now if your aim was a little off the bullseye, you could just lift it and move it over a little bit. Okay, that one worked. Fantastic. Okay, so we never want our clay to get dry. Okay. At any point you feel friction, yes. you're probably waiting too long to re-wet. So it's just a few dots of water, okay. but just often. So Let go ahead and give it stop. a few dots of water. Okay. And now, you're going to be with your left pointer, I'm going to use my right pointer. Okay. We want to get our clay spinning. And what we want to do is seal it to make sure it's not going to come off the wheel. Okay. So we're going to apply a little bit of pressure on this bottom edge, right up against the wheel head. So this is the wheel head. So it fully seals. And the idea is you don't want to see any shadow under there. So if I were to look at it closely, there's nowhere for air or water to sneak in underneath. Okay. Now, the first step is centering. The idea is we need this clay to be spinning so perfectly in all directions that it's like an ice skater spinning so fast that it's a blur with no movement. And the idea for why we have to do that is if it's not centered, when we make a hole in it, we're gonna have a thin wall and a fat wall and it's gonna be dancing and we're gonna fight it the whole time. So we wanna put pressure down and forward. People do this in a variety of ways. So let's wet our hands. So gently apply pressure down and forward and then stay as still as you can and then gently come off. Let's see. And you want your palms to do more of the work. You're like pushing forward. Okay. Okay. You could just Look go from here to here. Look at how perfectly yours is spinning and mine's still. Do it every day for 20 years. See what happens. By golly. <laughs> All right. So when the clay's pushing at you, you want to push back like a little extra pressure. And then you just stay as still as you can. Imagine you're doing a push-up, and then you're going halfway down, you're just holding it and that tension, and then slowly release it. Now this is probably the hardest step, but the most important step. So we're gonna make sure you're centered. Is it okay if I hold your hand in place? Please. All right, so go ahead, let's do it again. And I'm gonna hold your hand in place so you can feel what that stillness is supposed to be like. All right, go ahead, put your hands in position. And then you're, why don't you hold your thumb for right now? Let's see. Hold my thumb. Well, let's see. Maybe the clay's not big enough. You want the top hand to be pushing down, right? Okay. So this part of your hand has power. So from the radius is the only thing you really have to worry about. Okay. And now this one's going to push forward. If you want to, you can kind of anchor a little bit. So, right? This reminds me of a scene in the movie Ghost. And what do you know? They actually have a poster of it up on the wall. And gently let go. So, with a little bit <laughs> more still. Not too bad for a beginner, I'd say. So, there are many ways to do most of these steps, right? Everyone's bodies are a little different, everyone has different power. So I'm gonna show you what I think is the most successful way for beginners. Okay. So, I like to do a little activity for a second because a lot of what we're gonna do is kinesthetic, right? It's the way you feel things. You can't always see what's happening. So I like to point out the fact that there are blind potters who make amazing work because they're seeing everything with their fingers, right? How much thickness, how much pressure do you have to apply? How do you find the center? So right now what I want you to do is without really pushing on the mound, if you rest your thumbs in the center and you can move, close your eyes and you move both your thumbs left to right, and forward and back. See if you can find the exact center of the clay with your thumbs, where that middle point is right between the tips of your thumbs. And when you feel like you've found it, go ahead and make a little indent with the tips of your thumbs. Now, did you notice that the inside of your clay is a lot drier, right? Yes. Because we've spent time adding water to the outside of the clay. So my suggestion is to put a few dots of clay right here. And because we have a... <laughs> <laughs> because we have a small ball of clay, yes. we don't necessarily have to go in with our fingers. Going in with our thumbs is easy because it's not a lot of clay today. So you're going to really gently go down with both your thumbs, nice and smooth. If at any point you need to add water, exactly what you're doing is right. A few drops of water and then keep going. How am I doing, coach? Doing good.
The next step is called opening the mouth. Okay. So we are going to be widening the circumference of the circle. So you don't want to go too, too fast okay. in terms of your hand speed, but your wheel can go fast. Okay. Now you want to add water. Now the idea here is that your hand is going to stay vertical and come towards your body. What I want to point out is that today we're just going to focus on making a cylinder. What I find is that beginners, when they are widening, often they go like this. So the top gets wider, but the bottom stays narrow. And that would be if we were making a bowl. But since we're making a cylinder and we want an L shape on both sides, I want you to make sure your fingertips are doing the work as well. Okay. So when I'm down there, I often tuck underneath first a little bit before I even straighten my hand. You can put your fingers in there and kind of feel that if you want. You want to feel the, the ledge? So you get a sense? Yes. So do you see that ledge? Yes. It's okay to make a ledge. You don't have to. I'm basically just deconstructing the step of pulling my fingers straight towards my body nice and easily. And I only want to go about the diameter of a mug for today. So it's up to you if you want to kind of tuck and then pull or if you want to just do it all in one. All right. Okay, so put your hands in, then you're slowly, you don't have to do any pinching or anything. You can just pull towards your body, make sure your fingertips are doing the work too. You want it wide enough that you'll be able to fit your hand on the inside. I'm just so nervous about pulling the whole thing off. It happens, but it's just clay. You get to try it again. You learn way more from the failures than you do from the successes. It's like science. It's, it's a an great statement. It's an iterative process. Yeah. You want to make sure you're calm for this next step. Okay. All right. It's called pulling. Um, <laughs> the pulling. idea is yes. that we are pulling the clay from the bottom upwards. So it is a pinch of sorts, but with I gotta direction. I got to tell you, this is the best ceramics I've done in my whole life already. It's great. It's fantastic. Thank you. You're amazing. All right, now, let's keep going. Let's finish it. Yeah, okay. let's do it. All right. Now we want our speed to be a lot slower. And there's one thing that's really critical here. I want your hands to match the speed that the wheel is spinning. Congratulations, you made it Thank pie. you, right on. This has been a blast, Veronica. Thank you. You're welcome. So for the visitor, what can the, the, can the visitor do? Come and do something for the afternoon? Absolutely. So I have a lot of visitors that come in for private lessons, especially if it's their porcelain anniversary. Um, but more than anything, we have a BYOB sip and spin every Saturday night from seven to nine o'clock. And it's kind of a party vibe. So that's more like your first time on the wheel, what we did today, but it's a little bit more of a game for anyone that wants to participate and whenever something goes wrong, everyone needs to take a sip. Um, so that's like a little bit of a different environment and it's a lot of fun. Tell us how we can find our way to Community Clayworks. Well, the website communityclayworks.com would be a first landing pad, but we are at the end of Industrial Way on the back side of the building nestled between Fig Mountain Brewery and the Summerland Wine Processing Facility. Are you on any social media platforms? We are community underscore Clayworks on Instagram and we're on Facebook. All right. Thank you again. This has been a blast. Thanks for coming. I'm proud of myself. <laughs>